Hi guys, buenas noches. Estamos aquí en, en Madrid con Kaleen. We're here with Kaleen in Spain and she's ready to rave in Spain tonight with the football team, uh, the whole, you know, gear up. So, yeah, Kaleen, how are you? So nice to see you again here in Spain. Yes, thank you so much. Um, I'm very, very good. How are you? I'm fine. We just arrived here in Madrid and you are getting ready to rave tonight with your Spanish fans. How are you feeling uh, to see your Spanish fans after Eurovision and after you came to Madrid uh, in April? Yeah, I, I can't wait, really. That's uh, that's what kept me going because it's already really late. Usually I'd be in bed <laughs> by that time now. But I knew that the Spanish fans are so worth it. I remember it was my very first Eurovision-related experience, actually. It was the very first time that I performed We Will Rave at the same place same place and uh, that's so cool and so crazy to now look back and to be able to yeah have this own journey of mine but also of the song of the fans of just everything so i'm i'm really really excited for for everyone who's coming tonight yeah. i mean it's a very different experience now you can relax you can perform late because you don't need to wake up tomorrow early morning to rehearse and all the eurovision crazy schedules yeah. but um how are you feeling now to to sing again uh this song because when when you performed for the first time you were really like nervous and you were like really you know because there were so many you know the good good uh critics and good um you know comments about the song but yeah, you had to live up for the expectations of the life yeah, definitely and and uh it's it's very interesting that you say that because that's what i what i was thinking about this whole day actually that now it's such a a privilege to just come to a concert and just enjoy myself like not that i did that uh, not that i not did do that before wow that's a, that's a sentence <laughs> um but um it's just yeah like you say it's just more relaxed now because i know people like it i know they know the words so maybe i don't even have to sing i can just do this and don't worry because i don't have to prove anything to <laughs> anyone <Literally. laughs> uh, exactly just so focus on dancing <laughs> just exactly just enjoy um uh, yeah and that's what i'm i'm really really excited about it's i feel like yeah my my second performance that I get to do that after Eurovision, and it's it's really, really special. <laughs> so the first one was in the Pride in, uh, in Vienna, right? Exactly. So and you're here for the Pride. So you are performing tonight in the La Riviera, in the same place as you performed the first time, but this time it's a, a festival, like a Viva Pop festival, which is uh, related to the Pride. How are you feeling performing in such big events for the LGTB community and celebrating this song and sharing this song with um, your fans? I think still it's such an honor to to present this song to sing this song always with the crowd I never sing it by myself it's always something that we do together um, for the LGBTQ community to to sing it at a pride event I think it's it's the best community it's it's almost the same as Eurovision <laughs> and therefore um, it's it's so supportive it's just about fun about celebrating life and that's the definition of my song so <laughs> of course um, that works well together um, yeah it, for me it's an honor and tell us, how was the uh, performing for the first time in the Vienna Pride uh, after Eurovision? How, how did you feel after? Because I guess that after Eurovision, you put We Will Rave in, in you know, on pause because you've been yeah. singing it forever, 24-7, yeah. since uh, early March when it came out. So, yeah. um, Well, it's funny because for me, We Will Rave is, it has already been here some time. It's, it might be old, but for me, it's, it's not completely done yet because I know it will always be such a big part of Kaleen because it was the door that opened um, so many possibilities for me. So I can never put that aside. I'm not bored of it. I'm not tired of it yet. Um, and what surprised me in Vienna at the Pride is that every time I sang it in Austria before Eurovision, I was always like, okay, you know... In London, they they were louder, or in in Sweden, they were louder. Not to say Spain, because Spain, no one yet um, was, loud, right. was louder as Spain. <laughs> yeah, yes. louder than Spain. More than Eurovision, maybe. Yes. <laughs> no, no. Oh, Eurovision, you couldn't hear it. Thinking about it, exactly, I could not hear it, and therefore, I think let, let's just say Spain was the loudest. <laughs> but I probably louder even because it will be more people, and you know, uh, yeah. people know it properly now, world by world, exactly. move by yeah. move. Everything, yeah. yeah. So I I really can't wait. Um, yeah, but. At the Pride in Vienna, the whole uh, place where it happened, it was full and people were really screaming and shouting, singing the song. And they also wanted uh, an encore, which 
was a first for me. I've never had people shout, oh, do one more, do one more. Um, so, yeah, it, I'm still experiencing so many things for the very first time, which is so nice. Nice. And uh, if you could um, go back uh, in your memory and to the Eurovision, I guess that all that those two weeks were like, uh, you know, very yeah. blurred and blend together in your in your mind. So you cannot maybe uh, think of a specific uh, moments. But uh, what are your you know your memories or like if you could like uh, describe with few words the whole Eurovision experience in Malmo and how um, you look back to those memories now? For me, generally, it was. Um I feel like I was in a tunnel. I was very focused on, okay, today we have rehearsals, today we have this, today we have this. Now when I think back, sometimes, you know, when I brush my teeth and I feel like, yeah, I did that in Malmö as well and I was not nervous. How did I do that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Eurovision superpower. Yeah, superpower. You really, you grow into into the production. So at the end, I wasn't even nervous, which was crazy. I, even now, and it's not that long ago, I don't know how I did it. Um So generally it was so, for me it was really positive. My dream came true. I got to show the world what I can do. And I did not feel, of course it was a very special year, not to forget that, um, but for me it was very, very positive. So uh, as we know, uh, even if um, you know you were one of the fan favorites and uh, your song was so much loved uh, through the fans uh, the result wasn't what we all expected but that's okay because uh, you made it to the finals and yeah. you, it was the best you could do like the performance wise but um, what do you feel when you first saw the glitch on the of the performance of the camera on the finals and also what was your reaction after uh, the results uh, were announced so my approach to Eurovision was always um, of course you want to win or you, you train you prepare everything as best as you can that you can win that you believe that you can win but at the same time you don't think about that or i never thought about that i did not yeah yeah, yeah. You, you were objective you know you were like on the ground you had the yeah. feet on the ground and you know you knew like how the competition was and how difficult yeah. was that. yeah how difficult it was and also you can like you yeah like you said you can only do your best at that time and that's Exactly, and that it's, it's still a competition, it's voting, it's personal opinions, you, you cannot control them. And the only thing that was important for me was that I get off that stage and I'm proud of myself. And I was, and therefore the camera glitch did not matter, the results did not matter. All of that was just, yeah, it was part of the Eurovision experience, but it was not part of my perfect moment. And yeah. therefore... I, I really I did not care for a second, um, even though people don't <laughs> believe it. <laughs> but I was I was so so happy. I mean, um, you were proud of your performance. Your team was proud of you, and we were all proud of you. All your all your ravers. So you can be proud of everything and happy. You know, like and you know better than anyone because you've been in Eurovision, like back the, uh, in other years. Like not not as a front singer, but you know always in the background and stuff. You know how Eurovision works, and you know that the yeah. place that you end up doesn't reflect your popularity or like your career. So exactly, yeah, anything can happen at all times. <laughs> um, so know that if you want to be at Eurovision <laughs> one day, um, and also I still feel like you cannot not win at Eurovision. There's always something to take from there, whether it's fans, whether it's experience for yourself. Um, It, you do it for a reason, and it's important that you don't forget that reason. And I feel like very, very little amount of people do it because they want to win. Of course. Of course. To focus on like to... The whole thing, but I, I don't think that Nemo, for example, said, I want to go to Eurovision because I want to win Eurovision. He wanted to be on a stage and do what he loves. Mm. Or, yeah, that's, that's how, how I feel about it. For sure. And talking about your uh, colleagues, uh, Nemo and the rest, uh, we know that this year it was uh, a different, you know, year, uh, a strange year for everybody. So you couldn't like, you know, because of the restrictions and all like the, you know, things that happen actually in the Eurovision week, it wasn't very easy to maybe, you know, hang out as much as possible as you wanted with other delegations. But um, who do you still talk with and who do you make the best uh, connections with? Uh, not in Eurovision, only in Malmo, but during the whole season. So for me, uh, for the whole season, I really felt like I was I was really focused on myself. Of course, yeah, you you connected to others, um, and I had um, fun conversations with others, but not too deep. Mm -hmm. um, and also, our hotel was a little far from the hotel where the others were staying in Malmo, so I did not really make connections that 
kept going. Um, I don't have anyone's phone number. <laughs> Contacting them on social media, you, uh, they would probably never see it. So um, for me, it was a little hard to yeah to connect to to them on a on a personal level that you can say okay now we're friends for life because we lived through Eurovision 2024 um although everyone was so lovely and I feel like if I see one of them again it will probably be yeah as if nothing happened in between so uh it, it did feel like a family but yeah unfortunately I don't have really much yeah. contact to any one of them anymore it, it really it went like this um which is okay because i feel like it does that sometimes yeah. and yeah there i think everyone was just in its own movie yeah. and um in their own movie mm. yeah true and um will we see you somehow in eurovision either junior that is going to be here in spain Maybe in November you are around here doing some staging or some, you know, <laughs> stuff. Or in the future, do you think, uh, will you be back at Eurovision in any form? Maybe. I guess never say never. I feel like if it fits, if it feels right for me, if it's the right song or if it's uh, the right interval act or opening or host, <laughs> whatever. People people were saying different things. Um, so... I feel like, yeah, definitely. I still think it's the most beautiful and precious production we have, music-wise and just community-wise. Yeah. Um, and uh, Junior as well. Um, so I don't know if I'll be working there uh, yet this year, but I'll for sure um, go there and see what the amazing kids have all done and celebrate with them. Uh, I would love that. Um, the time of, of the year here in Spain you will be. <laughs> If you yeah. come. Yeah, in exactly. November. Yeah. Um, so. You will meet with Carlos. And with yes. Oh, and I miss them so much. So I, I really, I really want to come. Yeah, you need to. Yeah, you, you are always welcome here in Spain. <laughs> and um, finally, um, who would you like to see in the future representing Austria? Because we know that Austria send very like different uh, acts every year, and it's like kind of like Spain is not a, co a country that really has a consistent, uh, you know you know, um, podium or like, or, or like, you know, results, like they always oh, yeah. come either like really high, really middle or low, you know, it's like yeah. very varied. It's like Spain. Yeah. Who would you like uh, to see? Or what do you think? Maybe not a singer, maybe you don't, don't, you don't have to name anyone, but what would you like to see uh, in the future uh, to represent Austria? Which kind of style, song, singer? Wow, good question. I feel like, uh, I think approaching who's going to represent a country at Eurovision it can start at many different points and I feel like the most uh, authentic and the one that I think could work the best is if it's authentic. So I don't think you should go and look for a Eurovision winner because of their, I don't know, uh, ethnicity or music style or anything of that. If you find a great artist with a great song and you believe in them and in the whole thing then it works yeah. and i feel like all of those things for a hundred percent it happens very very rarely this year happened perfectly with nemo you know it's like the yeah. the, the, the the perfect example as you said yeah. like the song fit fit them the message the aesthetic the everything so it's difficult to find this like a hundred percent true to, to themselves yeah. uh, package so yeah i i i agree and therefore i think it could be everything yeah. it could be everything so uh just know if you want to go to eurovision it's not just partying at euro club it's it's really really hard work mm, yeah. um most of the people just don't um yeah are not prepared for that and also for the mind for everything for your yeah. body for your mm. team for your family for mm. it's it's uh it's not easy yeah, but you it's you pass your you post your life for yeah. literally almost a year so yeah. Yeah, but it's uh, at the same time, I can say that it's worth it or for me, it was worth it. Just really think about that. And I feel like if you really want to do it, there is a way. Yeah. So I'm really, really excited to see also because now I was so much into everything, of course, because I was a, a big part of it um, this year to see what happens in other countries who are they sending next and who who's Austria sending next? I mean, do I know them already? Will I meet them one day? I mean, all of that. So it, it will be very exciting even next year. Yeah, for me. 
Yeah, nice. And um, finally, um, what are your plans here in Spain? What are you planning on doing? Um, tonight you are performing, but uh, maybe you have time tomorrow to visit a little bit, to uh, enjoy the, the Pride. Yeah, we have to see. We're still thinking uh, about tomorrow what we're going to do because I'd love to be at the Pride, of course, but um, our flights were already booked beforehand and they leave before the Pride begins. So maybe in the morning you can walk around and yeah, see something. No, that definitely, because I... I I'm a big summer fan, so I love it, even though it's really, really hot. Yes. Some people might say it's too hot. I like it. <laughs> um, yeah, so definitely have some good breakfast. Churros, <laughs> chocolate. Um, yes. Maybe it's too hot for that, but still. Maybe I should get that tonight. After, After the show, for sure, they will be send, selling it. Yes, I will, I will do that. Um, yeah, and then I think I have to come back, because I already leave tomorrow. Um, so I really have to come back and not just come here for work, but also to, yeah, to do some sightseeing. I've been here, I think, four times and I've never actually been sightseeing. Mm. So yeah. always for work. So you need to come back. Yeah, but yes, but I have a present for you so you can have a, a oh. Spanish snack. I know that you're a big fan of uh, palomitas, which is uh, um, popcorns, okay. but this is the Spanish version, which are chocolate ones. So oh. you can have a sweet, um, either breakfast tomorrow or tonight after your show. Tonight. <laughs> Let me put them now on the on the fridge, uh, on your room. Because yeah. They are a bit melted, you know? I came on the bus and they were like... It's, uh, uh, not, yeah, it's hot. It's summer. Yeah. Uh, chocolate melts. Popcorn yeah. does not melt usually, but <laughs> melted popcorn, chocolate popcorns. Oh, thank you so yeah. much. Thank but you. Enjoy them, and yeah, I, I, I hope um, the performance tonight goes well, thank and you. I wish you the best. And also, we will see each other for sure somehow, and sure well. we'll be around in junior or Eurovision next year or whatever. I know, I know, hundred for sure, percent for sure. So, oh, uh, and it's always a pleasure to have you here in Spain. You are always welcome, and you are uh, supporting Spain uh, in the because Austria is already eliminated, I think. Uh, so now you. And now you don't have... I, I, yeah, and now I'm, I'm with Spain. I'm full on Team Spain. Yeah. Now you need to uh, support the Spain. Yes, definitely. And you, uh, next you next, next, next I think it's uh, the semifinals already, right? Tuesday, Tuesday, yes. Tuesday. Against, I don't know who yet. But Germany is out also, so... <laughs> which are the, which were really good ones, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, France probably, yes. Oh, yeah, it's France, yes, against France. Eurovision in soccer. Yeah, literally. <laughs> Spain won it, but no, France won, but this, Spain is hosting it, so maybe it's the same story now. Wow, and now it's a conspiracy yeah. theory. <laughs> you know that when uh, last time that um, when Italy won the Euros, Italy won Eurovision. So now, maybe if uh, Spain... Maybe Switzerland is, I think, is playing tomorrow, oh. so maybe Switzerland is going to win. <laughs> so we have Junior and Big Eurovision all in... Wow. All in Switzerland. Yes. Let's see. But yeah. But yeah, thank you so much for your time. And uh, yeah, we'll see you very, very soon again somewhere. Yeah. Thank you.